Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a great show. Um, it was one of those shows that I, you know, kind of was watching and go like, I probably would have liked to have been at that show live. Ah, here we go. Somebody was <laughs> late, late, for the, late for his call. Yeah, I, uh, there were a few people there who uh, who I know who had a great time, uh, who were there live and in attendance. And one of our mutual friends uh, was very hopeful that the New Japan title changed hands because that was one of the ones he hadn't seen in person. So that was awesome. John Moxley beat Tetsuya Naito in the main event. Going into the 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 build of that show, like I sort of felt like it was 75-25 that Mox was winning. And then as we got closer, I started to feel it even more. But there were people who did not think that Mox was going to win this title. But I, it just felt to me like it was like the perfect place for it to happen. Yeah, 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 I think so. I think so. I mean, I didn't like I mean, I I I certainly expected it, you know, from the moment the match was announced. I figured, you know, it just kind of made sense. One of the things and I don't and I don't know if this is um I don't know if this is good or bad because because actually Naito I think has has, you know, he's clearly the number one star in that company. And he and when he's been champion, he's drawn well and his title reigns have always been sm short. And I know people there, and it's kind of like one of these things where, where you were, people say this, and it just gets repeated and repeated. And um, I don't know if there's anything actually to it. You know, this happens in wrestling all the time. You know, like people will make these statements and they kind of like everyone repeats them. And it's sort of taken as fact, even though if you like examine it, it's like, oh, if you, you know, if you examine it, it actually makes no sense. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things in Japan that, that, so many people who are high up in Japan feel is that Naito is better not being champion than being champion. Um, and that's why he always has short title reigns that like him winning the title is a big deal, but long-term, you know, somebody else should be champion. Um, it, is I don't know that it is a heavy ask from a I, wrestling perspective to be the champion of new Japan. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily buy it because I've never seen stats that back it up, but I do know the mentality is there. And so whenever he's champion, it's always like, okay, he's kind of a transition to who, you know, and Moxley seemed out of the box because he wasn't going to Japan. I mean, he's, he goes to Japan for some big shows, but he's never there regularly because of AEW. Um, but he's seen as that level of a star that they could put their title on. So I thought that, you know, there was nobody else. So I kind of, was, I've been expecting it ever since, you know, Moxley cut the promo challenging him uh, before he even, um, I believe, I, I believe he hadn't even won the title when he did that, um, when he did the first promo. So, um, well, you know, I expected it. It was, uh, it was a great match. You know, it was a couple of great matches on that show. The, um, obviously, Zach Sabre and Jeff and um, Matt Riddle, you know, was was fantastic. And um, Stephanie Vacare and, um, you know, um, her match um azumi with azumi was i mean i only saw the end of it or like the last couple minutes but it sure looked good to me it was really good stephanie vacare's presence is is a pretty pretty spot on i think she's is it, uh, is, it, it's one of those things where i was like why isn't she somewhere else after watching that match like why not not that where she is isn't fantastic for her but i'm sure well, you know, you know it's, it's like it's, it's it's like she she could probably she's probably on the verge of being someone who could make a lot more money you know because cmll is not you know high right. you know highest paid or anything like that and i thought when she wrestled mercedes on the um, new japan world show um and people saw her for the first time in the united states when that match was over i thought oh, she's going to be you know wwe and AEW were both going to be after her and and i don't know if they that they were they weren't but nothing happened you know she's still in cmll and not not that AEW needs to you know cherry pick everyone but when i watch these new japan of america shows and they you know and some of these women actually do wrestle in roh my thought is like man let's just add all of them to aew's main roster like let, let you know let's just ha have more women uh, wrestlers and you can do more matches because i think that they're all pretty darn good so um I'm, I'm hopeful that that we do see more of them and especially well, in AEW. i mean azumi's wrestling tony storm which is tomorrow i think so yeah yeah uh, so eliminator to match yeah yeah title eliminator, eliminator. Yeah. Uh, back to the Azumi, next, back to azumi azumi's great though she was off what? no she was awesome yeah she's great yeah uh i, I do want to get back to one thing about naito is um do you think that he is 
better as sort of the challenger on the journey to the title because the the emotional response he gets from the crowd when he is the challenger with the possibility of winning the title is almost second to none. I, you know, there may be other reasons, but just in my viewing of, of him, I haven't seen his entire career, but it just seems like the fan base really, really gets behind him on that chase. And then, you know, some people are just better for the chase. Look, the there, look, look, there's definitely people who are better as, as chasing challengers. And then when they win the championship, they're not as good. I mean, that's that, but I don't know that, it's, it's 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 um there's a couple of things here though number one i don't know that he's that you've ever had a fair shake to where you really can examine this and he's still the biggest star and i think that the champion most of the time should be the biggest star not mm -hmm. always but but most of the time and the other thing is is that you know they need a freaking superstar bad and he is the biggest superstar they have um i mean i don't know i i mean i would I would like the idea that the belt is there to put on somebody new this year, you know, like Yoda Suji, but Yoda Suji, I never expected because of the hierarchy and being in the same stable that he was going to beat Naito this early in the game. Like he could beat him, but you know, I thought it would have to take a couple more years. Um, you know, we're going to have, it looks like Moxley is going to defend against Ren Narita and then probably against Shota Umino. So, um, you know, we'll see how long it is for, for new Japan. If he's going to come in, cause you know, the champ, they really only have a, sh a small amount of uh, IWGP world title matches during a year. So he could hold it for, you know, however long they want, even if it's a year and, you know, do five, six matches, whatever it is during the year, you know, and go for, you know, he could, he could do that and have a lengthy ring if that's what they want. Um, if they want him to be the guy to, crown one of these young lions so to speak that which we call which he called them um and you know that he's the guy you know beat a big american star um to win the championship you know he's there and that's a that's good and and it could be you know yoda suji without the idea that he's beating his his stable leader or you know i mean i i think i think umino is is not the guy to beat moxley because of their um relationship um but they could do it you know um and you know maybe you know moxley turns on him after losing i mean you could definitely do that storyline too there's there's a lot of ways you can go so we'll go through the uh all of the results here in a second but the other sort of big thing to come out of this show i know that people were watching very closely was uh, jack perry coming out uh, with the crimea river jacket uh, very interesting, very loud crowd reactions kind of going back and forth throughout his match. He teased some of the punk stuff. He did the go to sleep sign. He got, he, uh, put, uh, Umino in a, um, in a guillotine <laughs> in yeah. a front face lock. Uh, but he lost, he lost the match. You know, you know, what's so funny is, is like all that stuff, everything that he did insider, right? Every insider thing got giant reactions. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like you're going it to inside, but it very clearly it wasn't too inside because if it was too inside means you do something and then nobody reacts. Nobody reacts. That means you're too inside when you're doing something and the people are reacting huge. You're not too inside. And, and all that stuff. It was very interesting because the minute he came out, I mean, he just it's, it's weird because it's kind of been in its own weird way handed to him. Um. You know, it's not anything that he has naturally done um, to get this heat past the idea that um, they were in Chicago at CM Punk City, so he was going to have great heat there. And he's, you know, trying to play a dick and everything like that. And, you know, how it will work in other cities is is a question, you know, because you you, ju you just don't know. Um, and how, you know, how it will go over, but on this night in this city, like if you're Tony Khan, right. And you're evaluating what you did on Wednesday and everyone's saying that it's, you know, almost everyone said it's a bad idea. Okay. And you, you know, the rating comes in and the rating was good. But like I said before, before this ever happened, if the rating was good, so what, I mean, it's one week's rating. Um, if the rating was bad, so what it's one week's rating. It's the, 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 the overall pattern that matters, but. You know, the, um, you know, if it creates Jack Perry as a superstar, you know, you, you can always use a superstar. I don't think that tonight was something that proves that, 
because it was a unique set of circumstances. But if you're looking for encouragement and to say, hey, look, it worked, the Jack Perry reaction tonight is is one where you can go in there and claim, hey, looks like it worked because when he, the reaction he got, it's like, mm, you know, that was kind of how was that? what I was thinking watching it. My reaction is, wow, it really worked. But then, you, you, you know, as we've talked about watching it is like, but it was Chicago. Mm-hmm. It's a very unique market. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work in St. Louis. That doesn't mean it's going to work in San Francisco. Um, and his, you know, learning how to do that role, because I think he can be su- successful in that role. Him learning how to do that role, um, you know, he's got to learn how to do that role. It's, it's, um, there's, there's, he was, he's thrust in it. You know, it's like it, it was in its own way, a lucky career break and he's selling t-shirts and everything like that. So that's good for him. But, um, you know, to keep it going, you know, is, is that's a different question. And we'll, we have to watch. There is going to be, uh, a promo that he'll have to cut and he'll have to explain the scapegoat. He'll have to explain yeah. certain things. So I hope they have some, you know, really good stuff for that. Uh, and like promos, said, prom, prom, promos been sure interesting this uh, last week, haven't they? Wednesday, <laughs> Wednesday's promos were very much stuff that people have talked a lot about. Yeah, more so than anything else uh, yeah. for AEW. Uh, for, AD, uh, for AEW, oh yeah, the, the the two promos were the things that everybody talked about. Which, again, going into the pay per view, um, is it good or bad? You know, um, we'll see. I think the other thing that's going to be interesting is is what you just said in that. He is now in a position where if he can take advantage of it, his stardom is going to be much higher higher. than it was when he left or when he was suspended. Mm -hmm. And it's it's kind of one of those situations for him. Like, you know, he's he's a young dude. He's like the same age as as like my son. And so I'm almost like, you know, I, I hope he's doing his homework or I hope he's like figured out what he wants to do. And, and they're going to be really smart because it's an opportunity that doesn't always happen. No, and no, so- you know, but, but you know, it's funny about wrestling and, and, and so many things is there's a lot of what happens in wrestling that gets over. Um, it's not planned. You know, sometimes the planned stuff gets over, but a lot of times it's just shit happens. Flukes happen and right place, right time. Someone says the right phrase. Or there's something like this, which is just a, you know, show the footage. And it's kind of like he's he's now important. He's now a star because of whatever. And 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 it could be, again, it could be one week. It could be main t- it could be 20 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, if he can if if he's good at this, um, and good at this role, it could be for a long, long time. If he does this and he's not good at his role, uh, you know, it'll dissipate quick. So it's, it's, it's incumbent upon him. Not everyone gets this chance. Very few get a chance like this. So it's incumbent on him to make the most of the chance that a series of flukes handed you. And, uh, you know, we're going to know. We're going to know real soon. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. 
thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, tens of thousands of hours of audio, all for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.